Hello there, world of tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a full dive into the Projet Merat. This is a tier 10 French tech tree medium. It's a vehicle that was just released into the game, and I literally just got this vehicle researched. It feels so nice to not have to grind crew or spend gold on crew. I normally would have spent gold on the tier 7, 8, 9, and 10 for my videos rather than grinding out their crews. So, Wargaming making it so you no longer have to grind crew to 100% on a new researched vehicle literally saved me about four to 5,000 gold, which is actually pretty sweet. But we are not here to talk about crew grinding. That'll be another video. We are here to play in the Projet Merat. And this tier 10 is honestly quite fun looking. So we're going to be going over its stats, I'm going to be going over its armor for a brief bit, and then we are going to finish off today's video with live gameplay and my personal opinion on whether I think you should grind this line, or you should go for other mediums like the newly mega buffed E50M. So let's start off with the stats. This vehicle actually features the worst damage per minute for a tier 10 medium. The TVP5051 is sitting at 2700 damage per minute, but this tank is 2630. So this is officially the worst DPM medium, but 2600 is not bad, especially when you realize that this vehicle is a double shot autoloader, just like a Bosch Ation Barask down in tier 8. So it's able to deal 370 damage with a 2.4 second incher clip, and that means in total you can deal what, 740 in just 2.4 seconds? Yeah, that's pretty dangerous. And I think it's still going to allow this vehicle to be quite the deadly opponent. So I don't think DPM is really the issue here. Dispersion is not great at 0.33, but its aiming time is very fast at only 2.8 seconds. So you're going to be able to aim in very quickly. It has 8 or 9 degrees of gun depression, which is going to allow it to be very flexible. And really good heat pen. 345 mils of heat makes this one of the highest for a medium in tier 10, which is actually going to allow this gun to butter through the majority of heavily armored opponents. Mobility wise, it has a great power to weight of 22 and a top speed of 62. So this thing is fast. It has really dangerous dam damage output and 9 degrees of gun depression. Honestly, on paper, the Morat seems to be quite the capable tank. But obviously, we are also going to want to take a look at this vehicle's armor profile. So if we make our way over to Blitz Kit and we go to Tankopedia, we'll take a look at this vehicle's armor. I don't think the armor is going to be anything amazing. Obviously, it's a French tier 10 medium, so most French tanks aren't great. But what I will say is it's better than you probably think. We can see that the upper plate on flat ground, due to the way it's steeply angled, is an auto ricochet to basically any shells. Now, heat shells will cut right through. You only need about 200 millimeters of heat on flat ground to cut right through the tank's upper plate. But if it is using gun depression, then the upper plate will be a bounce against heat, so something to keep in mind. The gun mantlet is actually pretty troll. It's 265 millimeters base, which means standard ammo will bounce the gun mantlet. But loading gold, even heat shells, will cut right through, as it's only about 270. So it's not that hard to cut through the turret, but it is kind of goofy. You can see if you miss it by a little bit, it will bounce. So honestly, I think that this armor is a lot better than people would think for a French medium, and that is going to allow it to kind of get away with some really, really fun plays. While the armor using gun depression can get you some bounces, in reality, don't expect many. Because this tank is large, very large, and it has a massive lower plate, its sides are really weak, and, well, uh, not very well angled. So, while you will get bounces, I would not rely on this tank's armor in any world. I think if you do, you are going to be very mistaken. But, I think the gun is actually going to be really, really dangerous on this vehicle. While it does not feature the most accuracy, it does feature pretty good on-movement values, and it has very good aiming time, so you are able to get some quick snaps into your opponents. So we are going to start this battle off by heading towards mid. As we mentioned, it has 9 degrees of gun depression, which actually makes this a very flexible tank to run in really any position. We got spotted by the enemy Marat, which is interesting, but... We also have a 2 and 5B here, which is not ideal, uh, not at all. Mm. 
Okay, well, we'll see what we can do. The problem with the 2 and 5 being up against us is that it has, well, pretty nasty uh, heat, or APCR, which is not uh, not good for me. Now, our E100 is going to push uh, to the wide over here, and I'm going to support this E100. I think that'll be a good play. So we'll see if that works out. I have a feeling the enemy team's going to try and focus this E100, and if they do, that's where we're going to be able to get out some uh, pretty good bleeds. So, let's see. Let's see. He's going to push, and we're going to get to the side. We got one shell, and two. There you go. 278. What a terrible roll, bro. 278. Well, unfortunately, while the tank may have 370 damage per shot, you have to get decent rolls in the vehicle to get that damage out. So that 121 in the back is actually getting bled out pretty heavily. Let's see if he pokes that. Oh, he's going to. And if he pokes just a little further, there's one shell, and two. Well, we didn't get the second one, but we still did get him cleared. I'm not sure why that 121 tried poking that position, but obviously it did not work out too well for him. Alright, let's make our way up this hill here and see if we can get out some damage into the Chieftain or, ooh, even better yet, the 183. There's 340, and there is another 380. And that is really the best example of this double shot mechanic in action. Like, we just took a full health 183 and brought him down to a one shot. And while this tank may only feature 2600 DPM for a medium, we can see that that is still plenty to rip out damage. Look at that, Chieftain 399, boom, 463. This is where the Marat feels great. And this is why I do think that it's actually a really, really strong tank. Because that level of damage output is just so nice when you play it properly. So we have the Chieftain. We do get a clearing shot into his tank. The Jagdpanzer is pushing the enemy FE2 and 5B. And we're going to push him ourselves. There you go. And a nice ram as well for 575. That's always pretty sweet. So now we're going to back up. And we got a WZ-132-1 in the spawn who shot us in the rear. What an incredibly skilled player. Well, let's hope that he doesn't get nuked by the AG because, well, he does, unfortunate. Well, we get one shell into the WZ, and he's dead. <laughs> what a genius player, bruh. This is a good game, though. This is a great game to showcase where that double shot mechanic feels super strong. This plays literally just like a Barask in Tier 10. But I actually really like the DPM. While it's not like 3200 like other mediums feature it's still pretty good levels of dpm uh 14 seconds is not that long of a reload really when you think about it and the mobility is very nice the gun depression makes it super flexible i honestly i i'm having a fun time in this tank which is exactly what i want wargaming needs to make more balanced lines less overpowered lines so this game here we did 3600 damage and we had a pretty chill game we were able to dominate the ridge line get some bleeds into the enemy and push them off even with that clip that low rolled the enemy fe2 and 5b we had what a 280 damage shot out of a 370 alpha because the other still rolled like 380 when you add those together, we, we still did like 700 damage. So here we go on a new map. Well, not really new, but for me at least, because this map has not been put into rotation for the last like five, six months. And that is Yukon. I actually like this map. It's pretty fun because of the way it's designed, especially for mediums. There's a lot of really good positioning you can place your mediums in. So we are going to chill right in this bush here and see if we can get out some damage into the enemy. Let us find out. Also, I've noticed my game audio might be a little bit louder than some people want. So let's turn it down to like half. There you go. All right. Where is the enemy? Let's see. If they're not spotted here at all, then that means they are most likely in mid towards heavy side. It's a little weird though, they have three mediums. How do you have three mediums on your team and you proceed to drive zero of them towards medium flank? Like, what? What are we doing? What are we doing here, bruh? Well, what I can say is not good stuff. Like, a badger's gonna die. He went alone to the other side of the map. Not sure what he expected was going to happen, but we got one shell into the VZ, two shells into the VZ, both low rolled, but that's still 600 damage taken off of his tank. It's still pretty good. I mean, that is where this vehicle does feel really good. Great play from our Karo. That sucks. All right, well, our team is not doing uh, very good right now. Uh, let's see if we can get some damage out into the enemy. Nope, we are not able to get any damage into you. 
And it would not surprise me. Ooh, there you go. We got the Projet Marat. There's one shell into his tank and two. Sweet. Okay. Uh, let's back up before my VZ kind of gets in my way. I'll let the VZ push that. There you go. Let's move around here. And let's see if I can maybe help out my 183, possibly. He's getting rushed, and I'm praying that he gets one shell out, but no, he does not. All right, well, we have the 121, and we also have the 4202. What are they going to do? That's the question. Well, we have the 4202, we got one shell out, and... Ah, oh, not able to get the second. That 2.4 was so close, but it just wasn't enough. But, I'm not sure what he's doing. Like, why doesn't Amarat just fight him, bruh? What, what are we doing? Why are we running from a, a one-shot 4202, man? I don't know. I really don't. Oh, boy. This is not what I would consider to be a good team. This is what I would consider to be a very, very poor team. Well, we get one shell into the VZ. Bad roll. But, we still get two shots into his tank, bringing him down to a one-clip for us, which is pretty nice. We're getting out damage. And we're doing pretty good here. We are now just going to reload... And the VZ actually uh, gets cleared. And I'm just trying to think of how I want to do this. I will I will take the trade. Oh, wait, he's running a double shot. That's right. I forgot that thing now has a two-shot gun. So I actually have to be really careful about it. All right, well, we did get some good damage. And our Rhino is fighting the enemy there. So we'll see how this works out. I also don't know which gun the enemy E100's running. There you go. One shell and... Uh, my teammate blocks me, which is not ideal. Let's see. E100 shoots him. I'm going to reload my clip and leave. I'm hoping that our Murat gets the clear. Bounces, bro. That's wild. Oh, man. That is not good at all for us right now. The VZ gets the clear on my teammate. And let's see. The VZ, again, it does have that double shot gun. Oh, man. And my team dies. Well, there goes my game. Unfortunate. We did a pretty good result here. We're going to get one shell into the VZ. And we're going to try and hatch him. Bounces right off his hatch. But it really... I can't say we did much wrong. I mean, our gun worked fine. We got plenty of damage out this game. That's all pretty nice. So what are we going to do now? Well, I think really the only realistic approach would be to drive away as fast as I humanly can and maybe position back here, try and get some damage out. Um, do we have the gun depression for this? I don't think so. But I do think if we move like this, we should. Let's see. Is the enemy VZ going to roll around this corner? Actually, no. Interesting. I really thought he would. Okay, well, they don't know I'm flexing back. I mean, I'm not going to win this, Seba. Way too healthy E100, and they have two double-shot auto-loading VZ55s, so this this is not going to be a win. But, if I can get out some damage, I will be more than happy. There's the enemy VZ, there's one shell into his tank, and he actually doesn't get the shell out, which is pretty sweet. So there you go, nice little chunk of damage into his vehicle. He tried blind-firing us, but it obviously didn't do anything, so let's reload again, and... I'm just going to move up. The base cap's way too high for me to really counter it at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move right over here. And let's see. There's the 100. We got one shell out. He actually misses me. We got a second shell out. That's all pretty good. Again, we are going to die. There's nothing I can do to counter the loss. But really good game. 5,000 damage. Solid result. And it's a great way to showcase that. Sure, the damage permitted on this tank, it's nothing incredible. But... The double shot damage output allows you to deal really good damage. I mean, this was a solid game. 5,036 damage, obviously top on the team. Unfortunately, my 60% Project Marat on my team did literally nothing. He missed the one shot on the enemy VZ. I don't know what you're doing, bro. You're 60% and you're missing these shots. Like, that's, that's a bit sussler, I'm not going to lie. But... We've been having pretty good results in this tank so far. So what am I thinking about the Marat right now? Do I think it's a good tank? Do I think it's a bad tank? Well, I think it's pretty fun. I'm not going to sit here and say it's the best tier 10, because it's not. It's it's too large to be the best tier 10. This thing is huge. And that's the only thing I've noticed is that it's just a very easy target for people to shoot at because of the sheer size of it. But, on the other hand, that gun feels really good. And the damage output is very nice. So, I do like this tank. And I do think it's actually a very fun vehicle. But as I said, it's really big. And that does run into some super big problems as well. 
Now, we have a lot of problems with the enemy team here. They are playing super aggressive. Are we spotted through the... Of course we are. Who needs, uh, who needs camo, right? I will have to take a look at what this vehicle's camo is, but I have a feeling it's not very good if we got detected right through that. Alright, well, we're just gonna drive right over, and that's because we can. So there's one shell into the T-100, and we get one shell into the 62A. Ah, our Fosh has killed himself. Great play from the Fosh. Average Fosh player, thinking he can get away with whatever he wants, instantly dies. Alright, well we are now going to reload, and we're going to see if we can get some damage out into the 62A. Let's load a gold shell, 286, and... Oh, okay. Well, the Marat's going to shoot at my teammate. We got the 4202. Oh, man. Well, we are still alive, and the Sheridan actually bonking that player is pretty good for us. So that's also pretty solid. Okay. Well, what am I going to do here? We got the Marat, and we got a lot going on. I'm going to start this game by getting behind the 62, getting a 390, and ooh, a 440 HE. That's pretty juicy. That is pretty juicy. But our Patton has now killed himself. Oh, he actually lives. That's really, really lucky for him. Um, we're going to reload here, and I'm going to aim in on the Marat. We're going to get one shell. There you go. And two shells. Sweet. That's a pretty decent amount of damage into his tank. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bounce, beautiful, and we get a uh, penned once, okay, you bounce me, only dealing 11 damage, which is pretty huge for me, there's one pen into the Marat, and two pens into the Marat, okay, that is all pretty sweet, now, 4202 bounces me, and this is where that reverse mechanic is actually pretty nice, but, at the end of the day, not exactly what I want for me to deal with here. Okay, let's load in a gold shell. We get one pen into the 4202. We get a second pen into his tank. He bounces me. The armor on this vehicle is pretty solid, as we can see. Like, you will definitely get bounces in this tank, but at the same time, we're not getting many bounces, and that's pretty bad for me. Let's just hope that we get another pen. We do. We deal another 388 damage. Again, awful team. Like, what are we doing here? What are our teams today, man? I'm just trying to have some fun in this tank, but looks like the teams aren't allowing me to have fun today. The gun is great, though. I mean, 4,200 damage. We blocked 1,440. At the end of the day, this is a really strong tank, and I've been having fun in it. When you have a team that does 300 damage, 600 damage, and 700, and, like, not a single player on my team did over 1,000 in their mediums. It's unfortunate. But I've actually been enjoying this tank, even with these bad teams. The Project Marat is a really strong medium. It features solid damage output. It features good gun depression, troll armor, as you can see. But as we saw on the enemy Marat, not great armor. Like, I went right through that thing's upper plate. I went right through its lower plate. In general, it's not going to be an easy tank to get bounces in. But it's a fun tank, and its gun is really, really solid. I've played around 10 games in the tank today to get a full picture of how it performs, and what I can say is that this is a proper line to grind for. If you like the Barask and you want a tier 10 version of it, this is a really fun tank. I think the tier 9 is going to be even stronger than the 10, and I think the 10 is really strong. I would give it a solid 9 out of 10. I don't think i give it a 10 out of 10, especially when there's vehicles like the E50M, but you'll notice definitely the major your weak spot of this vehicle is other mediums. You only have 2600 DPM. So that 4202, for example, that player was able to get very good bleeds out into me because of the fact I was reloading constantly. And that's with him messing up a hash shell and bouncing one of his shots. If he had penned those two shots, I would have died way sooner. And that's what you have to keep in mind. This tank will lose to mediums in damage per minute, but it will win in trades. So if you're able to play this tank properly early game and get those bleeds into your enemy mediums when you need to, you can do very well. I really like the Murat. I think it's a fantastic tier 10. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!